one of the people there was thinking about starting a marketplace selling luxury items. My advice to this person was build a community first. Build authority as someone that can curate this marketplace. And once you've got that audience, then you can sell to that audience. Welcome to another Sunday Stand Up, where I, Kim Tang, take you through what I've been up to this week as an online business owner in the design space, in the hopes of sharing all the fuck ups and mistakes I've made so that you don't make them if you're at like a similar stage in your business or um, thinking about setting up your online business, whether it's in design or anything else. I think some of these tips kind of like will help regardless. How this works is I talk about what I've been up to this week and I talk about the things that I've struggled with and then I'll commit to what I'm planning on doing next week and then follow up the following week in a similar video. For those of you who maybe don't know who I am, let's just do a little recap, a rewind of like, exactly why I'm here and why I'm talking to you. I started off my career as a product designer working in-house um, at e-commerce companies like ASOS and Farfetch and I switched careers back in 2019. It was pre-COVID, it was just, it was right on the cusp of when COVID was sort of happening. So that's almost like almost five years ago. And I really enjoyed my time working in these in-house companies, got like a lot of experience around you know, how to approach a UX problem or how to design interfaces for e-commerce companies in particular. But what I really wanted to do was have more impact with brands that were trying to do things more sustainably in the supply chain and really try and change the um, various like retail industries that they were in. So I've shifted my focus. I quit my full-time job at Farfetch uh, back in March to focus all my efforts um, in designing and building Shopify stores for sustainable brands. So ones that are kind of thinking more consciously and are purpose-driven. What have I been up to this week? Well, last week I committed to sending 10 warm outreach emails and 10 cold outreach emails. And I just checked my inbox and I sent 25 emails. So about a quarter of the hundred that I was meant to send. Uh, you can you can punish me for that. I committed and I didn't deliver and I will talk you through what happened. Monday came and I generally try and do my hardest tasks in the morning. So it'd be something that maybe like I fear a little bit or I just I'm just not as like comfortable doing and sending outreach emails is one of those things. I think the method is called eat the frog. So this idea that like you don't know, really enjoy eating frog so eat the frog in the morning and then you have less excuses later on in the day to avoid that task it's a bit like people who go to the gym in the morning they do this because they then take away the likelihood or the chance that they're going to psych themselves out of going later on in the day because they're too busy they've got other things to do and they just simply don't have time to fit it in but if you just go in the morning and it's just like part of your system you have to do it so I was trying to apply this to cold emails and it just, it just didn't work. I it like psyched myself out of it. I got really weird about it and I ended up just lying on my, do you know what I did? I moved from my desk to my sofa to make it feel a little bit more like casual, right? Like as though I was just emailing a friend. And I thought if I had a more casual setup that this would create an environment where it felt less scary. I then ended up on my phone. I then ended up lying down with my phone and scrolling Instagram for two hours, just paralyzed, think like completely putting up my own mindset blockers to doing this task. And then when it finally came to do it, I was a little bit out of energy, it was the end of the day and I think I managed about 25 of them. The good news, is that three people got back to those emails. And so those emails were um, asking anyone if they wanted a free Black Friday site audit. And luckily three people took me up on that offer. If I'd sent it out to 100 people, which was the target, then I would have had 12. And now 12 warm leads is much better than three warm leads or zero warm leads. And so what I've realized with this whole lead generation, client awareness, brand awareness thing is 
that it's a numbers game. The more people who know you, the more likely those people are to buy from you. And the better you can deliver on those projects, the more likely they are to engage in future projects. So I am committing to just sending more of those emails out. I could have been better prepared for this week. I could have had a cleaner list of emails. Um, The other thing that I'm working towards, and you'll see through um, my LinkedIn, is that I'm being way more active in terms of posting valuable content to my ideal target audience. And this is all in the hopes of building that email list. So this week I've been focused on writing an ebook all about getting your Shopify site ready for Black Friday. I'm gonna be sending that ebook to the same list, more people, um, and sharing that content with them, getting feedback on what they think and improving that. And with all of this content, the idea is that you're putting yourself out there as someone that understands your client's problems and positioning yourself as someone that can solve them. And it's simple as that. So yeah, besides like myself of sending out those outreach emails, I've had client work. Um, So I've been managing the developer that is working on the site. Um, And that's required a lot of back and forth this week because we're kind of nearing the end of that site being built. We've finally put in the animations. um, And this week I've sent off a final link for the client to review. So that's really exciting. I also went to an e-commerce coffee morning. So that was like a networking event with other people in Lisbon that are doing a similar thing or setting up their e-commerce stores. One of the people there was thinking about starting a marketplace selling luxury items. My advice to this person was build a community first. Build authority as someone that can curate this marketplace. And once you've got that audience, then you can sell to that audience. And I was then thinking about my own business and I was like, I didn't apply that advice to myself at all. So I've been really kicking myself there. I've really been thinking, what could I have done better if I was going to go back? And I'm I'm really speaking to people here who are thinking about setting up their own business or are in the process of, or in a similar like position to where I am. I would say if you're in the early stages, you're like a lot of your focus should be about building a community, building that audience of people that are ready to buy from you. So how can you position yourself as someone that knows their problems, as someone that could solve their problems? Maybe you've been in their position before. Say for example, you are a dietitian or a fitness coach. Maybe you were overweight before. How can you show that client that you understand where they are today um, and that you get their pain points um, and how they're feeling. So what am I going to do next week? Next week, I need to send out this ebook about getting ready for Black Friday. So that's going to go out and I am going to be continuing to post my content on LinkedIn at the same time as taking a break for my friend's Hindu. So that's going to be on Thursday, but I do think I'm probably going to be working a little bit on the side and just keeping things ticking over because this content thing takes a really long time it is no joke um yeah that's been this week i hope you've all had a great week and i'll see you next week bye